Hi everyone and welcome back to episode 16 I believe it is of our ability system series. In this episode we're going to focus on generating the cooldown bar that appears on your ability if you successfully cast it. In the last episode we finished off doing the debuff and um, I want to just make sure we go through one bug that may appear in some of your games and it's this bug. So if you click on the enemy and apply a debuff they get launched into the air. Now the reason why that's happening is because we forgot to turn off the collision sphere of the ability to ignore or overlap targets. So you want to go to your ability route, choose the uh, sphere collision, scroll down to collision and you'll make sure target is set to overlap. So I'm going to change this now to um, custom and tick target to overlap. And you want to make sure it's the same for all of the other ones as well. So just double check going through all of these that your debuff child is uh, overlapping the target as well. And debuff curse is also overlapping the child as well. And now I'll fix that bug. So if I push play. And there you go. So as I said, we're going to work on creating the cooldown bar on our abilities. So when I cast the ability, this uh, will be greyed out and unavailable to use until it's fully cooled down. This cooldown time will get the time from it's the uh, the actual ability itself, which will ping back how long it needs to cool down. So the way this works is we're going to go onto our action bar slot, and it's mostly done on here. And previously when we made this, we already set up the cooldown bar to work on it. So it's already done the UI part of it anyway. We now need just to code this up so it uh, turns off and on. So when I first of all click a button, or a ability, it's just going to spawn the ability. Okay. Now before it does that, it needs to check whether or not it is available. Okay. And one way of doing that is just doing a simple boolean. So on variables here, I make a new variable called a boolean, and we'll call it is available. And we want to make sure when we compile it anyway, the default value is set to true. Okay. So the benefit of having it as a boolean rather than just checking the cooldown bars, uh, like progress, uh, percentage anyway, um, is that you can have effects in the game that turn off all your abilities and that could link to this boolean very easily. So it's better off to have it as a separate thing. Not that it isn't impossible to do it with the progress bar, you definitely can, it just makes it a bit clearer to see. So when I first of all click this button, I want to check that the is availability is true so we're going to get is available and plug that into our branch and if it's true it'll do the spawn actor part okay so after we spawn the actor we want to check what the uh, actor that we spawn is doing whether it was cast successfully or was interrupted um, all that matters because we have to determine what happens to the cooldown so we need to be able to bind uh, an event to those actions on our ability. So first of all, let's go to over to our ability parent. And in here, we need to set up some event dispatches. So if you scroll down on the left hand side, you'll see event dispatches, choose new event dispatcher and do cast success. And another one saying cast interrupted. So with these two added into here, we can now apply these to our um, into our world here, into our blueprint here. Sorry. So on the interrupt cast function, rather than printing a string, we're going to drag cast interrupted out and choose call. So basically, it's going to shout out that it was interrupted. And similarly, on the cast ability, we're going to drag cast success out and do call at the end of that one as well hit compile and then return back to your action bar slot. Now from the spawn actor we can drag this out now and bind event to cast success. We also want to do a bind event for cast uh, interrupted. Okay so on cast success we need to create a custom event and this is going to be start cooldown. Cool 
and that's going to the triggering of the timer and the cut and the progress bar and so forth um next is the cast interrupted and for that we need another custom event for end cooldown and we'll plug that into cast interrupted there so on the start cooldown we're going to start a timer so you're going to set timer by event and the event is going to be the end cooldown and the time is going to come from our ability class so drag your class out and should get and then from there we need to get the class defaults and you can see the ability details are there we can split that by right click on it and you can find in there the cooldown time drag that into time we'll make sure looping is turned off and we're good to go so with that timer we want to return value to be saved so drag that out and promote to verbal and call it cooldown timer and that will be all you need to do for start cooldown so once that is done we're going to go to end cooldown and end cooldown is going to do the is available back onto true so whenever it's end, ended any cooldown is available becomes true and after that we need a new update of appearances and that's updating the bar and so forth now the way this works is we need to set it up first of all up here which then triggers down here so let's first of all make a event up here or a function let's do let's do a function update appearance and our update appearance what it's going to do is take a look at whether or not we're available and react accordingly okay so we're going to drag is available out and choose get and put this into a branch so if it is available we want to make sure the cooldown bar is not visible so get cooldown bar and set visibility of this to be hidden and we're going to do the opposite for false so if it isn't uh, if the ability isn't available we make the cooldown bar visible after that we need to set its uh, percent okay its progress so I'm put cooldown bar if it is available we're going to set a percent to zero and if it isn't available we're going to set the percent to one so that's the update appearances function so that's just simply just turning off and on the cooldown bar effect Back on our event graph, we're going to go down to our end cooldown and we're going to drag that update appearances out there. We also want to go back up to where we've done these binds, back on the original click of the button. And on here, we want to change is available to false. And then tell it to update the appearances. When the cooldown is ended, we also want to take the cooldown timer and clear and invalidate it this will get rid of the uh, alarm clock essentially telling it to get rid of the timer so it doesn't get any sort of confusion later on what i'm going to do then is go over to my pre-construct as well and at the very start of my pre-construct i'm going to drag the update appearances out and plug that in like so so when i push play now the cooldown bar isn't available and it will appear when I do click on it because it becomes unavailable okay so next trick is to make it so it turns it off and on with the um, uh, the, the bars growing and shrinking okay so at the moment it doesn't animate at all okay so if I put it there you can see it stays on I can't remember how long the cooldown is for this five seconds maybe so wait for that timer to go and then it will end the cooldown and pop back off so I need to visibly be able to see that bar in action so the way that is accomplished is through the tick event so let's find the tick event and plop that in there 
and the tick event is going to drag in our cooldown timer and we can use the time remaining on this and the time that's been elapsed to calculate what percentage of the bar should be. So yeah, it needs to be on a tick because the tick is um, always happening and you always need to be checking the the, the size of our, of, our, um, of our cooldown bar. But we only want to do this calculation if the cooldown bar is visible. So I can drag cooldown bar out and get and I can go is visible and put that into a branch. That way I only do this maths code if it is actually visible. So the cooldown timer, we want to drag this out and get the remaining time. And we also need to get the elapsed time. And from there, we need to add these two together to get the total time. And then using this, we can calculate how much of time we've actually passed. So I can get normalize, ooh, normalize a float to range. The range max is going to be these two added together. The value is going to be the time uh, elapsed, I believe it will be. It might be time remaining. We'll have to look at that in a second. Um, and that will now go into our cooldown bars set percent as that goes into there like so. So you have to normalize it because the percentage is a normalized value. It becomes, goes from 0 to 1. And what normalized range does is it takes a minimum range and maximum range, looks at the value, and looks where it falls in between that as a percentage or as a fraction. So that will get us that. We're going to click Compile and take a look at our game now. So we may have to swap those two around. I can't remember which way around they go, but do that. And yeah, wrong way around. So let's do that and swap that around so the value is time remaining there you go and you can't click on it until it's gone and then you can click on it again and there you have it and that's how you do a cooldown bar So in the next episode, what we're working on is working on the actual ability to customize your ability stack here. You have a spell book, which then we can drag and drop abilities into our rack at the bottom here freely. If you want to watch that next episode right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you can find that episode plus many others. Big shout out and thank you to all my patrons for their continued support. This would not be possible without you guys, so massive thank you to all of you. That's it from me. If you like what I do, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.